Welcome back aliens, my name is Avin Reddy and let's continue the series on Spring Framework. Now till this point we have talked about what is Spring, we have talked about the prerequisites and then in, when, we talk, when we talked about Spring Framework we introduced a term there called dependency injection but that was just a name. What exactly this concept means? In fact in this video we'll not just talk about dependency injection but also IOC because Spring started with this concept. Of course, it has a lot of features, but then this remains the core of it. So what exactly these two terms are? So before we talk about it, the target for this video is 200 comments. Okay, so let's talk about IOC. See, when you talk about a typical application, it can be a web application or the enterprise application. See, ultimately, you want to give this application for your clients, right? So you have a client. Now this can be a browser. This can be your a mobile application, doesn't matter. And then what you want on this screen is data. So most of the application are data-driven application. You use it for the data, right? And typically, this data is stored in a database. Now it doesn't matter is it a SQL database or no SQL database, that's a different topic. The point is, the data is coming from database or maybe from some external service. But then how do you send your data from database to client? And that's where you write this server-side code, right? Now in Java, we can do that with the help of servlet. So somewhere in between, you need a system which will interact with the data database, right? So when a client sends a request, uh, you get the response back and then uh, your application interacts with the database, right? Now this can be a standard application, this can be a web application as well. Uh, if it is web application, you use servlet in between. So this box here represents a servlet or this is done with the help of servlet. But now we are talking about Spring, right? And a typical application, how it will look like. We normally create multiple layers. So of course, we'll talk about this in detail uh, when we talk about Spring Web, but typically we have multiple layers in between. Uh, just to show you here. So we got a layer here. Uh, of, of course, this will be a class in Java. And then we have one more layer here. Of course, this will be a class and we have one more layer here. So the role of this particular layer here is to uh, accept the client request. The role of this layer is to do any business logic. And the role of this layer is to connect with database, right? So we have different classes for different work here, right? Typically they are called as controllers, services, and uh, uh, repositories, right? So don't go with the short form, doesn't matter. We have different layers, that's important. Now, uh, the dependency becomes here is if you have a controller here who wants to talk to a service class, basically in Java, everything is object, right? So basically we have to work with a concept of object oriented programming and everything in Java is an object. That means if you want to work with service in the controller, we have to create object of a service inside the controller. So what I'm saying is imagine there's a class called controller in which if you want to use service methods, basically you need the object of service, right? So this is a class service and this is the reference. So if you want to use the service inside the controller, you have to basically create the object of it. And Java is object driven. Same applies to the uh, service. Let's say if service wants to work with the repository, imagine there's a class called service. And in this class, of course, you need to use some features of repository. We have to create object of repository here. And mind you, this is not the object, this is just a reference. We have to literally create an object by using a new keyword. That means in Java, this is only three classes, right? Imagine if you have a Java application which has thousands of classes. Okay, now that's exaggerated. Let's say you have hundreds of classes. So you have to create a class, you have to create an object of one class in another class and not just for one, we have multiple classes there. So what if, let's say we have a philosophy here by saying, hey, you know, let me make the work of Java developers simple. What if there is some external power who says, hey, Java developer, in your application, you focus only on the logic. Let me handle the object creations. That's a philosophy, right? So let someone else take care of it. And as a developer, now you're happy is because you'll be saying what's difficult in object creation, right? We can simply use a new keyword and object can be created. See, it's not that simple. When you say you are creating an object, you have to manage the entire cycle of it. It's not just about creation. It's also about managing the object, destroying the object. Right? And we don't do that, right? We simply create the object, depend upon how many requests we get for every new request, we create new object. And sometimes we don't need multiple objects. And still we do it, we create those objects. So what if 
you say, hey, let me focus on the logic. Let someone else in the world take care of it. That's the concept of IOC, which stands for inversion of control. So what it means is typically we create the object by ourselves. That means we have a control on the object creation. But what if you give it to someone else? That is inversion of control. You're giving the control to someone else, right? That's IOC. But then IOC is just a principle. It's a philosophy. So we need certain technique to do it. And that's where the concept of dependency injection comes here. So dependency injection is the actual implementation of IOC. So how do we implement IOC in, in Spring or in Java is with the help of dependency injection. It's a, it's a concrete technique. So a lot of people get confused between IOC and DI and they, get conf they, they think they are similar. Yes, they do the same thing, almost the same thing, but IOC is a principle, right? And design, uh, the dependency injection is a design pattern. It's the actual thing which we do. So in Spring, to achieve IOC, we use DI, dependency injection. So what we are saying is we have some external thing. Uh, he, in this case, it is Spring. Spring says, you don't worry. Every time you want an object, just ask for the object. I will give it to you. That is injecting the object. It sounds cool, right? So that means if you talk about this particular example here where you have a controller and a service, so let's say a controller here needs the object of service. We don't have to actually say new service. That's not our job here. You can simply say inject. You can ask Spring Framework to inject the object. You just mentioned the reference. Spring will give you the object. That is called the dependency injection. So basically there are three techniques to achieve dependency injection. One is the constructor injection. So what you do in the controller class is you create a constructor and in that constructor, you pass the reference of service and you say, now, since I need service here, inject the object. That's one way. Uh, the second way is setter. So maybe you can create a set of methods for that service uh, reference and uh, you can do the setter injection. The third way of doing this is the field injection. So in Java, we have a concept of loose coupling. Basically what you do is uh, you don't have a tight, you don't have a concrete implementation of one class and the other. Uh, you code for the interfaces, right? Uh, so if you use a field injection, somewhere you're stopping it. You're not able to mock test and all those stuff. Again, it will make much more sense once we go forward. Uh, so field injection is not recommended. You can go for constructor and setter. We are going to use field injection in this course, but we'll also focus on constructor and setter. So that's dependency injection. That simply means someone else is injecting the object in your application. And that someone else in our case is a Spring Framework. So I hope it makes some sense. And uh, once we start implementing it, it will make much more sense. Bye-bye.